the dancers are doing now is a warm-up. It's a practice before the, the big show, before the actual competition. And if you're wondering what the numbers are on everyone's back, it's not their age or their IQ or their shoe size. It's the square that they're in. There's about 60 squares here, and while the judges are up above, they're marking down different divisions. There's the uh, the younger dancers. There's the uh, I don't want to say middle-aged, but uh, young adults, and then there's uh, the seniors. Well, the black and pink is a very nice color coordination. My folks and sister would go and leave me home all alone. This is a big arena. So the dancers got to practice and prep a little bit before the dances in the last couple of weeks and the last few months on a lot of these dances because it's sometimes harder to hear whenever you're in a big auditorium like this. Oh, I like the patriotic colors there. Giving a round of applause to the first warm-up. Called by Fred Strang, Cambria County. Okay, now most of these squares seem to have brought some substitutes, some alternates. Give you a little chance there to get your positions. The, the outfits and the costumes are one of the most highly talked about topics in our activity of square dancing. There are a lot of uh, different groups of square dancers that, that dance in traditional attire, Western wear. And nowadays, as you can see, a lot of them, uh, because of the surfers, are dancing with sneakers. Uh, a lot of the clubs and groups that are going to, to casual, more of a casual wear, more of a casual look. And it's just wonderful because uh, we're able to do uh, work workshops where we're learning and teaching the calls. And I wish we had microphones in on these uh, sets with the squares of the kids to hear what they're talking about. I could always voice over what they're saying. This is Dan Prosser. Dan the man Prosser. He and his lovely wife, Linda, the red hat lady, will be, uh, Dan is doing the, com the competition calling here tonight. His wife, Linda, there's Dan. Smile, Dan. Dan goes into the schools and is quite familiar with uh, the younger dancers that we are promoting in the activity. And Linda is around Dan's Cure, which when she comes up, I'll tell you a little more about round dancing. Yes, it's it's like ballroom dancing, so stick around. You know, when I was competing back in the mid 80s, and I was talking to one of the other callers who who also competed at the farm show back in the in the 70s. The judges were a lot stricter back then. It was almost like if you've ever seen the movie Grease, where uh, they have the uh, dance-a-thon, and uh, the uh, chaperone comes up and taps you on the shoulder, you're out. <laughs> but what we're trying to do now is just showcase square dancing to the, uh, to the novice, to the non-dancing public, to show you uh, how much fun they have. And it is a great exercise. I remember one of the uh, ways they judged when I was dancing was um, they didn't like the boys to have their hands in their pockets. So if their one arm was in doing a call, let's say they were doing a circle left or a right hand star, whatever, wherever they put the, uh, the other hand, the free hand that was very important to the judges, that they either had to be behind our back, and you see some of them still do that, and other times it could be on your belt buckle. And 
boy, back in the day when we used to dance here at the farm show, uh, we had some of the legends of our square dance acti activity judging back then. Names like Carter Ackerman and Curly Custer. One of the other things that the judges look for now, I, I'm, I'm sure those of you at home have already figured out, they don't want you to go outside of your square. That's kind of a no-no for the judges. Nothing's gonna happen. They're not gonna get buzzed or anything. It's not like one of those invisible electric fences, which that might make the dance a little more interesting. Seems like there's one boy in that square. What a lucky dog. Is he smiling? Well, let's talk about that. There are a lot more women into any kind of dancing, it seems, anymore. And uh, sometimes uh, we have a low amount of guys. So what happens is the girls, who are usually the stronger dancers anyway, they learn the boys' part. Nice warm up. All right. First competition is coming out. Sucks and get back in. That was Dan doing Love You Too So Much. What a colorful view. Here's, here's uh, some interesting facts. Chuck Jones, the Bugs Bunny animator, he used to hire a square dance yeah, caller to call for his staff during their breaks at the Hollywood uh, Warehouse okay, Studios. And that color was Bob Osgood, a legend in the activity, who's in square dance heaven now. I had the opportunity of meeting him. It was really, really cool. Full oh, yeah. <laughs> That's Fireball Fred. He's one of our comedians, too. Get back and swing and go round and round the same. Gonna join up all your hands, circle, let the go round and go. Out and let that corner girl, you either ring, go and have a party. Well, a rocking jamboree. Swing that girl around, come on, and go round the sea. Gonna have a good time, everybody's feeling right. Gonna have a party, let's swear that's all night. Get to promenade to go halfway and down. Walk right in square through its floor and I'm a friend. So this is the first competition dance. This one counts. Some of you might know the tune. It's gonna have a party by the uh, country group Alabama. So the judges should be at the edge of their seats watching closely like hawks. Do see do, very important call in square dancing. Don't forget to sing along at home and clap and stomp. This particular dance that they're doing here, it's called a singing call. If you're a fan of karaoke, you'll like these. It's very interesting about singing calls. You have to listen to the caller. I mean, if you get into this activity, we want you to get into the activity. 90% of it, I would say, is listening. Of course, do-si-do -si -do is a call. 
Swing through is another call. Boys run, another call. So the dancers are listening very carefully to the callers' calls, the names of the calls. But you're also listening to the singing call song. This one is by Alabama, and these kids have probably heard it quite a bit over the last few weeks. And you want to sing along. Three of the calls that you might have known because you danced it maybe back in high school or just know are the promenade and the dosi do which basically is, it comes from the French, uh, do si do meaning back to back, which is what the actual call does. And promenade, which means to walk. All right. I like how they end some of their square dances with a swing, and some of them, uh, the guys got down on one knee and the girls twirled right into their knee. It looks like the painting American Gothic. Well, they have a little bit of a, a break here so they can catch their breath. You know, the, the squares, uh, used to always have to stay in motion. I remember that because that was a big thing with the judging. Uh, they, uh, it, when you weren't dancing heat at the parts like this, the judges used to actually watch, and I'm sure they still do. Uh, the girls were always whirling their skirts, uh, or we, the guys, would be twirling the girls because part of the judging um, in years past was on showmanship and styling. It was, it was a big deal to the judges. Okay, we're coming into the second competition dance. And this is Dano. Dan's going to be calling. That's my story. A Colin Ray original. Now, those at home watching, you can be a judge too. Keep your eyes on that white line. If there's footprints all over the place, that means they stepped out of bounds. Watch where the gentlemen put their free hand behind their back, belt buckle. Watch the girls for them twirling their dresses. Dan has such a great voice, very crisp, very clear. The PCN TV crew is doing a great job. I've covered almost every square out there. It's amazing. The camera men and ladies should be commended, commended for that. You saw the gentleman down there with the camera. It's like, look both ways before you cross the street. Okay, is it okay? I got no witness and I can't prove it. But that's my story and I'm sticking to it. 
the sides prominently, three former slim, the hands loop around the blue, and there once again, you pass through, touch a quarter, a slip circulating, boy run, slide blue, square through the three hands, swing the corner girl upon the name again. That was a great shot. Smiling right for the camera. That's a separate call, too, by the way. You walk around the corner and you see some home. The men smile like one. If I could give you a quick outline of the calls and the maneuvers. Do you know how in karate they have uh, different belts at different levels? You start off with the white belt and then you progress after you learn so many karate moves. You go on to the yellow belt, so and so and so. And then if you get really good in, in advance, you get to the levels of a brown belt and then a black belt. That's kind of sort of how the square dance world works. You start off at a basic level. Then if you do well with those few calls, you can move up to a mainstream plus level, then to go into advanced and challenge, but the typical, normal, average, everyday dancer learns about 100 calls. That was number four. So it looks like we have time for an intermission. So you guys can all go and take a seat, okay? We're gonna have some of the punter square dancers come up and do a little, uh, little bit, bit of... Uh... And the dancers are promenading off the floor. Now let's meet some of the dancers. Right. What do you like most about square dancing? I think it's really fun and it's a fun activity to do with all your friends. It's just cool to hang out and, you know. Yeah, I obviously, I like the outfits. It's, they're awesome. But uh, yeah, it's also just fun to hang out and learn something new. How and when did you get involved with square dancing? Uh, a couple of years ago, my mom actually found a paper, and she was like, "We found out. I found out that there's square dancing nearby, or whatever." And I, at first, I was like, eh, "It sounds a little weird," but once we started doing it, it was really fun. Yeah. How does it feel to dance in front of all the people at farm show? At first, it's like really like, it's like you're all nervous and stuff. But after you get out there and do your first couple dances, it's not really that bad. <laughs> Yeah, the first couple of years I was like really nervous every time like whenever we were waiting to go out and while we were doing it But now that I've been doing it a couple of years. It's a lot less um, Scary <laughs> I guess Do you think that you would ever be a caller or a cure in the future? <laughs> Me and Julia always joke about how uh, oh when we grow up We're gonna be like those old people that are dancing in the squares and stuff and uh, yeah it, Maybe but uh, I don't you know, I don't know. We're not sure yet. Yeah, I just like to dance. I wouldn't want to call or anything like that. But. Oh, it's so great to see young people in this activity. It, and there's another shot, just, just great. Hey, coverage of this year's Pennsylvania Farm Show is being sponsored in part by Weiss Markets. Underwriters for this year's special on-site interactive booth include the Pennsylvania Pork Producers Council, Pennsylvania's Egg Farmers, and the Pennsylvania Farm Bureau and the Pennsylvania Treasury 529 College Savings Program. We're getting ready for our square dance demo. The caller, Tom Miller. Tom's from Chess Springs, Pennsylvania and is a national traveling caller. Here's Tommy Boy right now. He's, he's a unique individual because he has been calling full time internationally since graduating high school. Tom has traveled to nearly every state 
uh, calling at Square Dance conventions and festivals and uh, groups and clubs. He's on the Board of Governors for Collar Lab. Now, if you want to see some interesting stuff, go to collarlab.org. It's the International Association of Square Dance Callers. Collar Lab. He's also an accredited Collar Lab coach, meaning he teaches interested and upcoming callers how to perfect their craft. And he does that at different collar schools across the globe. Tom is definitely not a uh, stranger to the younger dancers. He has a uh, high school program back in his neck of the woods and his two daughters square dance too. This is called the patter. Notice he's not singing anything really. He's just calling. This patter is the warm up. Is it back in the day the dancer learned that after you dance for five or six minutes, you're rewarded with the singing call. And whenever Tommy Boy does a singing call, the dancers are in awe and usually the audience members. Just a reminder, these good folks who are square dancing and cutting a rug right now are demo dancers. They're, they're just performing a demo. Whereas the competition, they had time to practice the songs. They, they, they knew what was coming. They knew the calls that the callers were going to call. Or say that three times fast. These good folks here dancing have no idea what's going to come out of Tom's mouth. Well, they have so, a certain idea. They know it's going to be at least a, one of the hundred calls that they've learned at different beginner parties, uh, lessons, what have you. And let me tell you, the surface is kind of fun because most of the time they're dance, used to dancing. These folks are waiting for the singing call. Here it comes. Circle left, I see trees of green. 
red roses too I watch them bloom for me and for you men star right and a man a left weave around the ring wind them and go out around the ring you know swing the lady promenade her home I think to myself what a wonderful world side square through four Those centers pass through, touch a quarter, scoot back, that corner sway, keep my nerve, probably the rain, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Side square three, for Amy Wonder, swing three, boy and night, you fair sweet. Those centers pass to slide three, square through three. Swing, you all proud a, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Circle back. great medley of those two songs made popular on the ukulele by the late great Iz, I-Z. If you were listening, some of the uh, dancers were not only singing back, but they were shouting out different sound effects. <laughs> it's one of the things in square dancing. Many calls do have the dancers sh shouting out and loud sound effects. Tom called a Ferris wheel. And almost every dancer that was dancing yelled, Wee!